In today's lecture, I'm going to move to chapter 5 on numerical algorithms for solving convex optimization problems. In the first section, I'm going to present the subgradient algorithm um, for solving um, convex optimization problems. So uh, we consider the problem minimize a function f of x where x is in Rn here f is a convex function from Rn to R the subgradient algorithm is defined based on um, the subgradients of the function f. Now, given a sequence alpha k, where k runs in the set of all positive integers, and each alpha k is greater than zero, the subgradient algorithm. is defined as follows. So at first, we are going to pick a point x1 in Rn. And then we're going to define xk plus 1 as follows. k plus 1 is equal to xk minus alpha k times vk where vk here is chosen in the subdifferential of the function f at xk. And that means vk is a subgradient of the function f at xk. So this algorithm works as follows. At first we pick x1 in Rn. Note that the sequence alpha k of step sizes is given. So um, after that, we will find v1 in the subdifferential of the function f at x1. Okay. So over here, we only need to pick a subgradient of the function f at x1, and then. Define x2 by this formula. x2 is equal to x1 minus alpha 1 times v1. Okay, so after this, we have we we find x2. Now after we we have x2, we're gonna move forward as follows. We find v2 that is in the uh, subdifferential of the function f at x2 and then define x3 by this formula. x3 is equal to x2 minus alpha 2 times v2 and so on. Okay? So um, the uh, subgradient algorithm is well defined. Now observe that The sequence f of xk is not necessarily monotone decreasing. So um, to keep track of the best function values, we're going to define a new sequence vk as follows. vk here is the 
min of f of x1, f of x2, up to f of xk. So um, in this algorithm, we're going to use xk to approximate optimal solutions of the problem, and we're going to use vk in order to approximate the optimal value of the problem. So um, there are uh, some issues that we um, have to address in this problem. That means um, under what conditions uh, vk converges to the uh, optimal value of the problem, and uh, under what condition xk here converges to an optimal solution of the problem. Uh, to discuss the convergence of the algorithm, we are going to use the following standing assumptions. Throughout this section, we're going to assume that f here is um, Lipschitz continuous. That means there exists a constant L such that the absolute value of f of x minus f of u is less than or equal to L times uh, the norm. Here we use the Euclidean norm of x minus u, and this is true for all x and u in Rn. The second assumption uh, we're going to use is that um, the, the problem minimize f of x, where x runs in Rn, has an optimal solution. Okay, so um, under these standing assumptions, um, we will continue to discuss the convergence of the algorithm. Let me first um, talk about a very useful um, lemma that uh, we're going to use later on. Let L be the elliptic constant of the function f. Then norm, the Euclidean norm of V is always less than or equal to L whenever whenever V is in the subdifferential of the function f at x and x is any um, element in Rn. Okay? So um, that means if um, f is, Lipschitz con is a convex function and if it is Lipschitz continuous with Lipschitz constant L then um, the um, norm of v uh, of any subgradient of the function at x is less than or equal to L. So uh, in particular if f here is a uh, differentiable function then the subdifferential sub of the function f at x reduces to the gradient of uh, the function f. So if f is Lipschitz continuous with constant L then the gradient of the um, function, the norm, the gradient of the function in that case is less than or equal to L. Okay? So the proof of this uh, lemma is very, very simple and it's based on the definition of a uh, convex subdifferential. Since V is in the subdifferential of the function F at X, we have this. The inner product of V and H 
is less than or equal to f of x plus u minus f of x. And this is true for x. Sorry, over here. f of x plus h minus f of x is um, the inner product of, of v and h is less than or equal to f of x plus h minus f of x and this is true for all h in i okay now by the Lipschitz continuity of the function f we have that the inner product of v and h is less than or equal to f of x plus h minus f of x and this is less than or equal to l times norm of um, x plus h minus x so it's just a uh, norm of h and this is true for or h in i so in particular we can pick this let h be x then um, from here I'm sorry over here let h be v then from here we see that the inner product of, of v and its cell is less than or equal to uh, l times norm of v okay and as you know the inner product of, of v and its cell is equal to uh, the Euclidean norm of v square and then after we uh, simplify both sides by the um, norm of v, we can easily see that. Therefore, um, norm v is less than or equal to l. And therefore, um, the proof of the lemma is complete. Now I'm going to discuss another uh, simple proposition that we're going to use later on. Let L be a Lipschitz constant of the function f. And we consider consider um, the, the sequence xk from the subgradient algorithm then we have the following estimate the uh, Euclidean norm of xk plus 1 minus x square is always less than the Euclidean norm of xk minus x square minus 2 times alpha k times f of x k minus f of x plus alpha k square times l square and this is true for all x in rn and for all um, k in the set of all uh, positive integers. Recall that um, here uh, alpha k is a step size and L here is the uh, Lipschitz constant of the function f. The proof of this uh, proposition is very simple and it is based on the uh, subgradient algorithm. So let me go ahead and give the detailed proof. So we always have this norm of x k plus 1 minus x square is equal to this. As you know, x k plus 1 here by the definition is equal to uh, x k minus alpha k times v k. So I'm going to substitute x k plus 1 by x k minus alpha k times v k and get this. This is x k minus 
um, alpha k times v k, and then we subtract x. Okay. And this can be rearranged as follows. This is the same as the Euclidean norm of x k minus x minus alpha k times v k square. Okay. So this is equal to norm of x k minus x square minus two alpha k times the inner product of v k with x k minus x. Okay, and after that we get this plus alpha k square times norm of v k square. Okay. So this follows from um, um, a very, very um, simple identity for the Euclidean norm. That is norm of A minus B square is equal to norm of A square minus two times the uh, inner product of A and B. <coughs> and then we add a norm of B square, okay? So observe that, um, Vk here is in the subdifferential of f at xk. So note that Vk is in the subdifferential of f at xk. And because f is Lipschitz continuous with Lipschitz constant L, um, so we always have this. The uh, Euclidean norm of Vk is always less than or equal to L by the previous lemma. And at the same time, because Vk is in the subdifferential of f, uh, f at xk, uh, we also have this. The inner product of Vk times uh, with x minus xk is always less than or equal to um, f of x minus f of xk. And this is true for all x in R. And again, this follows directly from the definition of uh, convex subgradients. Okay? So from here, we can uh, easily see that, observe that over here, we have something a little bit different. This is the inner product of vk and xk minus x. And over here, we have the inner product of vk and x minus xk. So from here, we will get that uh, f of xk minus f of x. So we move this to the left-hand side and move this to the right-hand side and obtain this. It's less than or equal to um, the inner product of vk and xk minus x, okay? So now here, um, instead of subtracting uh, vk, the inner product of vk and xk minus x, we're gonna subtract this term. That is, um, something less than this, and also um, observe that norm of Vk here is less than L, therefore we get this. The Euclidean norm of xk plus 1 minus x squared is less than or equal to the Euclidean norm of xk minus x squared minus 2 alpha k. Again over here, we replace this by something smaller, so we can have something bigger. So this is f of xk minus f of x. And over here, we replace norm of vk by L and get this alpha k squared times L squared. And therefore, um, the proof of the uh, proposition is complete. Uh, recall the subgradient algorithm that we define the sequence vk by this formula. It's the mean of f of x1, f of x2, up to f of xk. And uh, now we also define v bar by this formula. v bar is the optimal value of the problem. That means it is the infimum of f of x where x runs in Rn. Okay? And from the uh, standing assumption, we assume that the, the function f has an, an optimal solution, so v bar here is always a real number, okay? 
So in this figure, this is V bar. Okay, so this is the function y equals f of x. The next proposition allows us to uh, provide an estimate of vk and v bar. Okay, so um, the proposition is stated as follows. Let L be a Lipschitz constant of the function f and let be uh, the set of optimal solution of the problem under consideration. Now we consider the sequence xk uh, generated by the uh, subtrader algorithm, and then we get this. Then um, vk minus v bar is always greater than or equal to zero. This is obvious. Um, from the definition, and this is always less than or equal to um, the distance from x1 to the, the set of optimal solution, which is assumed to be non-empty, and over here we have square, plus um, L square times the sum of alpha k uh, square, alpha i square, where i runs from 1 to k, over 2 times the sum of alpha i, alpha i, where i runs from 1 to k. Okay, so we always have this estimate for all k in n. Recall that here x1 is the uh, initial choice um, of the algorithm. So um, here this estim estimate depends on the choice of x1. And, um, and also the Lipschitz constant of the function f and the sequence of step size um, alpha i. Okay, so now let me go ahead and uh, give the detailed proof of this uh, proposition. And after that, we're gonna use this proposition to analyze the complexity of the algorithm as well as the uh, convergence of the algorithm, okay? So over here, um, let me recall one definition, so if S is a subset of Rn, then the distance from a point um, X to S is defined by the infimum of the Euclidean norm of X minus U, where U runs in S. And um, uh, I already talked about that before in a um, lecture. Okay, so this is a set S and this is X. So this is the distance from um, X to S. Okay. Now, um, to prove this, we're gonna do this. Fix any point X bar in the set S and recall that as is non-empty by our standing assumption. And then we apply the result from the previous uh, proposition. Then we get this. The Euclidean norm of xk plus one minus x bar square is less than or equal to this. It's less than or equal to the Euclidean norm of xk minus x bar square minus 2 times alpha k times f of x k minus f of x bar and then uh, plus alpha k square times l square. Okay? And over here, because, um, because x bar is chosen, x bar is chosen in s. Okay? That means x bar 
is an optimal solution. f of x bar is equal to uh, v bar, that is the optimal value. So we always have this relation, f of x bar is equal to v bar, okay? So then uh, we can proceed by writing this, okay? So this is equal to norm of xk minus x bar square minus 2 alpha k times f of xk minus v bar plus alpha k square times l square, okay? Now, because this, we can apply this repeatedly, okay? That, that means um, at the same time, we can also apply this for xk and x bar and get this. Norm of xk minus x bar square is less than or equal to the Euclidean norm of xk minus 1 minus x bar square. And over here, um, it is what? It is uh, 2 alpha k minus 1 times f of xk minus 1 minus v bar plus alpha k minus 1 square times L square. So by the previous proposition, we also have this. And then we substitute, we replace this from here by the right hand side. So we get something bigger. And we repeatedly uh, apply this and finally we, we get then norm of xk plus 1 minus x bar square is less than or equal to norm of x1 minus x bar square. Okay, so we repeatedly apply this until um, uh, k minus 1 here uh, or k here is equal to 1. Okay, so over here we will obtain this minus uh, 2 times the summation of um, alpha i times f of x i minus v bar where i runs from 1 to k, okay? And then here we have this, the sum of alpha i square times l square where i runs from 1 to k, okay? So uh, this is what we get, okay? Um, after this, we use the following observation. So observe that v bar is always less than or equal to um, f of xi. I'm sorry. So observe that we always have this. Um, f of xi here is always uh, greater than or equal to um, vk. And this is true for all i from 1 up to k. How come we have this? Um, it follows directly from the definition of vk. So vk here is just the mean, it's the smallest among f of x1 up to f of xk. So each f of xi where i runs from 1 to k is greater than or equal to vk because vk is the smallest one. Okay, so uh, from here we will get this. So the Euclidean norm of xk plus 1 minus x bar is less than or equal to, over here we have the square sign, um, x1 minus x bar square, okay, minus 2. So now we replace um, f of xi by vk. And here um, you can take it out of the, uh, the summation, okay. So 2 times vk minus v bar. So we subtract by something um, smaller, so we, have, we get something bigger, okay times the sum of alpha i, where i runs from 1 to k. And here we um, add the sum of alpha i times l square, where i runs from 1 to k, okay? And one more observation, this is always greater than or equal to zero, okay? So, because 
this is greater than or equal to zero, we can uh, move this one to the left hand side and obtain this. Then we obtain this. Two times uh, VK minus V bar times the sum of um, alpha i, where i runs from 1 to k, is less than or equal to the Euclidean norm of um, x1 minus x bar square plus, um, and actually over here, I think over here we get alpha i square instead of, um, uh, instead of um, alpha i. Okay, so sorry about that. So over here, we get this. Uh, we can take L out of the summation, and then we get this um, alpha i square, where i runs from 1 to k. Okay? And after this, we can divide both the sides by um, the sum of um, alpha i square times 2. So vk minus v bar will be less than or equal to the norm of x1 minus x bar square, okay, uh, plus L square times the sum of alpha i square, where i runs from 1 to k, over 2 times the sum of alpha i, where i runs from 1 to k, okay? Now, note that this inequality, this inequality is true for all x bar in the set S, okay? So by taking the infimum with respect to x bar in the set as we obtain this. Vk minus V bar is less than or equal to the uh, distance from x1 to the set S of all optimal solutions plus L square times the sum of alpha i square where i runs from 1 to k and over 2 times the sum of alpha i where i runs from 1 to k, okay? And this is obviously uh, greater than or equal to 0 because uh, f of, um, um, because v bar is more or less among all um, function values. So this is what we want to prove in this proposition. And uh, so the proof is uh, complete. <laughs>